Hi, I'm Daryl Darnell, and you are listening to Chasing Dreams with Amy J. Welcome to Chasing Dreams podcast with Amy J. Amy believes that realizing a life without regrets is achieved by taking chances, chasing your dreams, making moves, and overcoming your doubts. The Chasing Dreams podcast will help you overcome life's obstacles, believe in your potential, and inspire you to face your fears. And now here's the woman who is passionately pursuing her dreams, Amy J. Hi, Dream Chasers. This is Amy J. And thank you so much for tuning into Chasing Dreams, episode number 49. Crazy, mind-boggling 49. And I have a special guest, and I say that all the time, but this one's very special to me. I'm so happy to have him on the show because he's been a part of the show, a very significant part, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But his name is Daryl Darnell. Daryl began podcasting about the TV show Fringe in 2008, and he formed the Golden Spiral Media in 2010. So Golden Spiral Media is now a large podcasting network with more than two dozen podcasts and growing. Golden Spiral Media has been nominated for nine podcast awards, including three nominations for Best Produced and winning Best Entertainment in 2010. Daryl has been consulting and producing podcasts for other podcasters since 2012 as a part of Golden Spiral Media. In 2014, he established Pro Podcast Solutions as a standalone brand to help podcasters produce better podcasts and hone their craft. Daryl has helped launch over 150 podcasts and produced over 4,000 podcast episodes, and he has been immense in um, helping me with Chasing Dreams, guys. He has helped us put this together. So a lot of what you hear, the equipment and setting up, is uh, thanks to Daryl. So, Daryl, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. That was that was quite a mouthful. I didn't realize I'd done all that. <laughs> Which you know, The time goes by and you forget that you've done all those things. 2008. You've been podcasting yeah. since 2008. Does that seem surreal? It's weird because 2008 is a long time in the podcasting world. I mean, there are a lot of people that have been podcasting longer than me. I'm not going to claim I'm one of the originals because I'm, I'm not even close. But at the same time, 2008 is a long time for podcasting life, and it's, it's been an exciting journey. Let's back up, though. Before podcasting, because podcasting didn't really come into the scene until uh, mid-2000s or so. Yep. What was life like before podcasting? What was pre-podcast Dar- Daryl? Um, well, I've always been an, a nerd. Well, yeah, I've always been a nerd, but I've always been kind of techy too. So I've always, I was one of those guys that carried around like a pocket PC back when those were a thing and, you know, just gadgets and stuff. So when I discovered podcasting, it was, I mean, I had to, I had to get into it and stuff like that. But yeah, so I've always been interested in technology and, and internet things, uh, fooling around with websites and, and all those sorts of things. But um, yeah, it didn't really become my my full-time thing for, for quite some time later. Uh, I worked at a bookstore. I, I Gosh, I did that for almost 20 years. Uh, and that's a big, big part of my life, starting out as a part-time cashier working at this bookstore and ending as the director of the e-commerce division of the company. So that was a big part of my journey. Wow, that's a um, huge journey. Yeah, yeah. So, but always along the way, interested in technology in some way or the other. Now, if you weren't podcasting, if that hadn't come into the forefront for you, do you think you'd still be, uh, maybe not necessarily at the bookstore, but um, working in that world? I don't know. I I would definitely be involved with technology in some way. Even when I was at the bookstore, I mean, my my degree is in computer programming, and so. I can't imagine whether I was at, whether I'm at the bookstore or doing my own thing as an entrepreneur in a different way. I don't know, but it would definitely be involved with technology in some way because that's just who I am. What's interesting about your story is that you were in that computer area and you were working on that in its shape form. Here comes podcasting. Do you remember how you first learned about it? I do. I I 
I've never been a big TV watcher. I mean, everybody watches TV. I'm very much a casual TV watcher. And I can remember back in 2004 seeing a commercial for this new show that was coming out called Lost. And looking over at my wife and her looking at me and both of us going, huh, that looks kind of interesting. Let's watch that. And so we did. We watched the pilot and it was done and we were like, that was like nothing else I've ever seen before. I must watch more of this. <laughs> and for the first time in our lives, we kind of made sure we were in front of the TV when Lost was on. We'd never done that before. So you were and, watching it live. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From the very, very beginning. And then it was like, what the heck just happened? You know, so now we've got to figure out, like, what's going on? What, what is this crazy thing making noises out in the jungle, pulling down trees and scaring people half to death and ripping the pilot and all that stuff? Um, spoiler alert, the pilot dies. Um, so we, I started going online and there were, you know, forums were huge back then and the forums are st still have their place today. But back then, you know, that was the thing. And so like ABC had their official forum and there were all these fan forums. And somehow through there, I discovered somebody had this thing called a podcast about Lost. And I'm like, uh, that sounds like something I'd be interested in. And that was it. Like I found all these podcasts. There was the Jay and Jack, the Lost podcast with Jay and Jack. There was the Transmission podcast with Ryan and Jen Ozawa. And there was another one that I really enjoyed. My favorite one, actually, was Cliff and Stephanie's Weekly Lost podcast, Cliff and Stephanie Ravenscraft. And, of course, Cliff is massive into podcasting. So um, I kind of gravitated toward Cliff and Stephanie and their live shows that they would do and the community that they built around their podcast. And so, yeah, that's how I found out about podcasting was just trying to figure out what was going on with Lost. And then that just kind of, boy, that set the hook big time for me. And it was, it was um, no, no going back at that point. But what's interesting, though, is that you were hooked on the listening part. I mean, yep. what, what made you want to produce your own? So Lost was the first time that I heard of this guy named J.J. Abrams. And J.J. is a household name today, especially after having rebooted Star Wars, sort of. And so he, he really helped establish Lost. I mean, he very much handed the reins over to uh, Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse. But J.J. was there at the beginning. And so for, for me and my friends, we we started following JJ and some of my friends already were following JJ's previous work with Alias and some other things like that. I was not. Lost was my introduction to JJ. But his next show was called Fringe. And one of my friends at, at work one day said, hey, you know what? Because we all were listening to Lost podcasts and other podcasts. It, we had all kind of started our own library of podcasts that we were listening to by that point. And he says, you know what? We should start a podcast for Fringe. And I thought, that's the best idea I have ever heard. And so that was because we had seen, I believe that year during the Super Bowl, this is 2008, they showed a preview trailer for Fringe. And so that's like in February, first week of February. And of course, it didn't start until September. So it was during that like February, March time that we had that idea. And so we spent the entire kind of summer figuring out what we were going to do. And we actually started podcasting in August, August 1st, I think it was, or maybe August 8th uh, of 2008, because the show didn't start until September. So we did all these preview shows and trying to figure out, because they had all these online games and teasers that they were doing. And so, yeah, that was, but that was, it was all because we loved what JJ was doing with Lost and we wanted to kind of get on his next project. And you're doing it and you're following, I mean, you went from casual viewer to fan. Yeah. Essentially. And here you are in August doing pre episodes. I mean, podcasting is huge now. T television shows have tons of podcasts or a good number of them dedicated to TV shows. But back then, I don't. Were there a lot of fringe shows? Uh, podcasts for fringe? Well, so that's the thing. Mm -hmm. there, was this, there was this website, a blog for fringe. And. <laughs> We started in August, and there's, a, there's another guy that I know. He's a good friend of mine now. His name is Wayne Henderson. And Wayne had this 
podcast he was doing that at the time was just was just talking about different TV shows. And so he hadn't come out with his dedicated Lost or excuse me Fringe podcast yet. He 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 did eventually and and soon, but um I can remember Right around the time Fringe was officially starting, this blogging site said, the first official Fringe podcast is here. And it was this podcast from these guys in Australia, and they were really cool. But I remember commenting on the blog saying, actually, they're the third. There's this guy named Wayne who was first, because Wayne started his in June. Mm -hmm. We started ours in August. They started theirs in September, right? And (laughs) the blog um, moderator came back and said, Wayne's doesn't count because he's not talking exclusively about Fringe, which, like I said, he eventually did. Um, But at that specific point, I don't remember if he was or they just didn't realize it. And then they said about us, they said, and the Fringe podcast, never heard of them. That's kind of like if a tree falls in a forest and nobody's there to hear it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was uncalled for. Um, But we so we were we were the second, uh, even though they said that that we didn't exist. We were technically the second. I give credit to Wayne for being the first. Wow, so you even got that exposure to the love. I mean, the internet is a beautiful place, but can also have uh, that side to it, right? Sure, yeah. You yeah. know? Uh, but you didn't let it deter you. And so you started this fringe podcast with, with your friends. and your. Yep. So what was your mindset? I mean, did you guys decide you're just going to talk about episodes? Yeah. Look, we, we had no idea where this journey would take us. We thought, we love JJ, the the trailer they showed for fringe looks amazing. We can't not do this. And maybe some people will listen, you know, maybe there'll be some other fans out there that will dig it. Like we hope we will. Cause we didn't know it was a brand new show, but we thought we'll just do it. We'll turn the mics on and record. We had, and we had so many, like if you go back and listen to our early episodes, they're terrible sounding. Our quality was terrible. Um, but we just kept, you know, trying to get better every week, do a little something better, try to get better, more organized, sound better, yada, yada, yada. And it was crazy the, the way things just exploded for that podcast. I mean, four episodes in, we're interviewing somebody from the cast, which was crazy. Uh, and then that really propelled us to a, to a different level. That same blog site that had kind of made fun of us earlier now saw us as a legitimate podcast and started featuring us some, from time to time. And so that it was, it took us on a journey we never anticipated thousands and close to 10,000 downloads an episode when we were at the peak. And it was just, we never thought that anything close to that. And, but you never did it for the attention or anything like that, but you had fun, right? Talking and doing these interviews. Cause I feel like your journey was very similar to what I did with, um, Haven and the fun I had with that. It, you don't expect what it turns out to be. You just kind of wanted to talk about a show that you enjoyed. Did you f- feel the same way, or and just, it took you places you didn't expect? There's no question. We ne- we never did it for to to be the the biggest. We never did it with any type of narcissism at all. Uh, we did it because we were fans of this guy named J.J. Abrams. And we wanted to talk about his latest project. And that was really, and we wanted to figure out what was going on. There was a lot of mystery with some of the teaser and online games they were doing before the show ever started. And we were fans of that. We were fans of unraveling the mystery and trying to figure out what was going on. And that was really what our goal was, was just to have fun and talk about this show. We didn't, we didn't ever anticipate it, you know, getting us to, in access to talk to actors or getting us, you know, sponsors or any of those things that came, came along the way. And you're doing this still at the same time that you're working full time. Yes. So in between your recording, what were you guys doing like a weekly or. We did weekly. We sure did. And we did, we would release two episodes a week pretty early on, like maybe halfway through the first season, we started getting in so much listener feedback that, our podcasts were getting so long that we had to break it into two parts, which was something kind of a, a happy accident that happened. We, we wanted to still talk about all the ideas and things that we had, but we also wanted to give the fans and they were taking time to write in and call in because we had a voice feedback line. We wanted to respect that and respect their opinions. And so we started doing two podcasts a week, even though we recorded them at the same time, we would release them on separate days. And the happy accident was what we, what we 
realized was happening is we were giving our listeners equal time. Our podcast was about an hour, hour and a half, and their podcast was about an hour, hour and a half. And it gave us this great dynamic where we were basically saying, you as the listeners, your voice is equally as important as ours is because we're just fans. We just happen to have the microphones. And it really helped create this, the, the listeners understood how much we valued them and it really helped us create a great community around that. I mean, you started with this one show, having fun, mm -hmm. uh, enjoying yourself, and then you go on to have a network, Golden Spiral Media, with, well, today, over two dozen shows, right? Podcasts. But as you're going through 2010, I mean, 2008 is about when Fringe, I think, you started that podcast, right? Right. Yeah. So 2010, you have now a company, and probably, how many shows did you have at that point? When we started Golden Spiral Media, I think, I don't remember how many we had, if it was our second or third or fourth, because we launched three right around the same time. So I think it was probably when we launched shows three, four, and five. I think the first two were kind of just independent things. And then when we launched our third, fourth, and fifth podcast, it's kind of where we decided, hey, let's make this a, a thing. I mean, you're making it a thing. Doesn't Doing that many podcasts eat up into your personal life? Yeah. Yeah, it did. And that's why three of those shows didn't live very long. Uh, it, was a, it was kind of an unfortunate series of events. So my, my business partner at the time, uh, he, he was my fringe co-host. And so we started Golden Spiral Media. And we had this idea to do a, a podcast for geeky dads and their families, uh, an Apple iOS podcast and I'm not sure what the third one was. It might have been our Cutting the Cable podcast and, and if that's the case and it was we didn't have five, uh, we had four, but it was no sooner had we started those podcasts and oh, it was Triple Cast. That's what it was. Yeah, so it was three. Um, so we, we started those three at the same time. Triple Cast, Dad Hacker and we called it Portable Orchard. Nice. And we, we started those three and then gosh, two weeks later, his boss calls him in and his schedule completely changed and his work and home dynamic completely changed to we had to, he had to try to rebalance everything and he was now doing a lot of traveling and dad hacker to this day i think and that was what 6 years ago i think it has i think it had 3 episodes or 5 episodes something like that oh, wow. portable orchard only got one or two and uh, Triplecast is still around to this day, but you know those had to those died almost as soon as they um, started, and it was all because we didn't we didn't know that a couple weeks later his availability was going to change, and we weren't going to be able to do it. And it was all that, but that's the challenge with with podcasting. They do take a lot of time, personal time and family time, and uh, you have to kind of figure out what your priorities are going to be. And we we had to shutter those, unfortunately. But you didn't shutter Golden Spirals. I mean, you continue nope. to grow, mm -hmm. but you weren't doing all the shows yourself, were you? Well, so we we kept Triple Cast going. Mm -hmm. Clint, my my business partner, co-host Clint, and I kept doing that one for a long time, and we were looking to see. Okay, Fringe is Fringe is not going to be. We weren't sure. The last two seasons of Fringe were almost not renewed, and. We wanted to try to keep the momentum going. We didn't want to lose our audience, so we started looking for another show to do. And we came upon Revolution, but Clint was not going to be able to do it. So NBC was starting a show called Revolution, and I, I grabbed another friend of mine, and we did the Revolution podcast. Um, and that only lasted two seasons. And then another show came along called Almost Human, and Clint and I did do that one. And it lasted for only one season. So all this time, it's me and somebody else. Um, and people were always writing in, will you do this show? Will you do this show? I love your format. Will you do this show, this show, this show? And I'm like, no, I, 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 I can only do so much. And so we had to reach a point where what are we going to do? Is Golden Spiral Media going to be limited to what Daryl and somebody else can host? Or is it? are we going to with certain standards and guidelines, open the door to bring in other hosts and do, do podcasts that aren't hosted by me. And that's what we did in 2014. Which was it 15? I think it was 14, though. Which is really cool because right now, 
there are other podcast networks out there, especially for, for media after buzz, but you guys have such a variety in your lineup. You have, you have arrow, you cover blacklist, right? Um, yep. you cover the flash. You, you have a wonderful spread of interest and you have a great cast of hosts who are, are helping you in doing this. Were you still doing this part time and working full time? I mean, I can't imagine running a business, editing, as someone who knows what podcasting is, guys, you got to record, you have to edit. If, you, if there are notes, there, there are notes, you put that together. I mean, it's not a record and throw it up there. And I, I'm pretty sure Daryl would never do that. I, mm. If that ever happened, I, I, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I just wouldn't, no. to be honest. Uh, but it's involved process, and that's per episode. I mean, you're using these podcast episodes. Were you also involved? I mean, you have other people doing the show, but did you have a hand in that too? So for me, a podcast was taking about 13 hours per week per podcast. That that was my personal time commitment. And that usually included watching the episode three times, you know, doing two episodes a week, one for feedback, one for the, our review. And so, and editing, right. And, and all that stuff. So obviously that doesn't scale. And I've gotten now, I've got that time down quite a bit where it's maybe closer to seven or eight hours per podcast episode that I'm involved. But, um, the way the other host also came about was, so, uh, so for fringe and revolution and I think even almost human, yeah, I was still doing my day job and there were days where I was spending more time on podcasting than my employer would approve of, you know, it was, it was definitely cutting in and, and causing me to, uh, split my, my time, uh, wrong. I should not have been, you know, spending as much time on that podcast at, at work or any time really, um, and so that was a problem. My and it be, it's because that was where my heart was going. I wanted to do that. I was more interested in that, and maybe that was part of the problem I had at the other job. But um, so what, what happened was I, I left my other job to be a part to, to do what I do now full time, which is do audio production and consulting and for other podcasters to help podcasters do podcasting the right way and sound great. And so my first client that I got was this up-and-coming TV podcast network called TV Talk. And they were different from Golden Spiral Media. Our, our podcasts are an hour and a half long, and theirs are 20, 20 minutes. And so it was a big difference. And so they brought me on as a host, but also to kind of coordinate the hosts and coordinate all the production. And they were around for about a year and a half, and they were privately funded and trying to get sponsors and that sort of thing. And it just didn't work out and funding ran out and TV talk shut down. And a lot of those hosts, those relationships that I had built during that time, those hosts, a lot of them were going, we love doing this. We want to keep going. You know, Hey Daryl, you kind of specialize in the comic and sci-fi area. Can we bring our show over to golden spiral media? And with the owner of TV talks blessing, we did that with a lot of those shows and that, but what we restructured them and said, Hey, with golden spiral media, you're not limited to 20 minutes anymore, you know, knock yourselves out. And so that was, we had a rapid growth that summer after TV talk, uh, ceased operations, but that's kind of how we, we found a lot of our talent and, uh, and grew the network to where it is today. I mean, I think it's a little telling that, you found yourself spending more time podcasting and editing and trying to make grow Golden Spiral Media versus your day job. And did it come to a point where you're like, all right, I have to make this decision. I have to decide day job or the other, right? And you have a family. So how do, how do you balance that when you want to do something so badly? But I mean, at this time, podcasting, you don't make money off podcasting automatically, guys. Mm. Despite what any TV show or anybody tells you, it doesn't work like that. I mean, it's almost uncharted territory. Were you nervous or scared about doing that, especially with a family and you had a stable job? Yeah, for sh- for sure. Um, and, and at first, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I just knew I knew for about three or four years, at least three years that my time at that company 
was going to be coming to an end. I didn't know when, but I knew that I was on a, a different path. And at some point, our paths were going to separate because it, it was just obvious. And it, it was getting more and more obvious each day. And so I didn't know if that would be podcasting. Um, in fact, I started a business that was website design. And I did that part-time as well. And even uh, led some um, some uh, classes, some teaching classes here locally for those for small businesses and how to how to get a website started and stuff like that. And I thought that that might be what I would do because I was in e-commerce and I wasn't building e-commerce websites, but you know I knew how to do all that stuff. And I thought, well, that's that's the natural thing. Um, and after really kind of pursuing that part time for about a year. I thought, no, this isn't it. I don't enjoy doing this because I enjoy building websites for me. But the whole trying to figure out what the client wants and and getting what they want because a lot of times what the client wants in a website is not what I would have chosen. And I'm putting on a website that they're happy with and I'm like, I don't like this at all, but it's what they wanted. Okay, And that was a weird dynamic for me. So I, I figured out that, that that was not what I wanted to do. And then this idea came about doing audio production full time. And I thought... That's it. That that's what I want to pursue. And so once I figured that out, I kind of started pushing in that direction, and things kind of fell into place quickly after, that, amazingly quickly. Um, not to say it was easy, but but that's kind of uh, the direction. It took me a while to figure out what direction I wanted to go to move away, but it was very scary. And and we were just trying to figure out how do we do it. Okay, we well now we know what we're going to do, but how are we going to do that? And TV talk was was massively important in that without tv talk coming along and hiring me to do the audio production for them i don't know I, the timeline certainly would have been different i don't know how how i quickly i would have been able to move on and do my own thing but it would have been different i mean you talk about relationships it's one of the biggest things people can have especially when you're trying to figure out what you want to do and it's it's funny how relationships can direct you because i met you through actually cliff ravenscraft i had approached him about looking and editing um, my original podcast, which was Amy J Live, which converted to this. And he said he was busy at the time. And he said, you know, I have a friend, uh, Daryl, who might be able to help you out. And that's kind of how we got in touch. And from there, you know, it's just kind of grew. But was was it relationships like that and the ones through your TV talk that help you grow your business right now? Because you're doing things not just in... Uh, gaming and sci-fi and the the comic book hero podcast but you're also with your pro, pro podcast solutions i mean chasing dreams is not comic book hero stuff you know but you're doing a wide variety i mean how do you find that wide variety of podcasts i mean i don't expect it to be in your hometown necessarily right i've only ever had one client in my hometown and he's no longer a client because he he shifted his focus from audio podcasting to uh, video stuff, and we don't really, uh, f that's not an emphasis for us at all. So, um, relationships is everything. It's everything. I mean, Cliff is, you know, Cliff and I met because I started calling in and submitting feedback to his podcast. And then when with with the bookstore, we got to a point where we were ready to launch. We worked a couple of years to to figure out how to do everything uh, operationally because of the way that we our company was set up. We needed to figure out how to ship a small box to an individual address, and so we did a lot of prep work. But when it came time to to launch, we needed to figure out how to tell people about our company because unless you lived in one of our six states at that time, you didn't know who we were, and. So I knew that Cliff had an audience that had a lot of crossover with our demographic for some of his podcasts and a large audience. And so I reached out to him and said, hey, can we sponsor one of your podcasts and kind of help get the word out? And we did. We sponsored his Family from the Heart podcast for several years. It was a great relationship. Um, and that kind of helped our relationship, Cliff and I. Uh, go to a different level where we were just kind of friends. Uh, and we, you know, I was podcasting by that time, obviously. He helped me get started and find the right equipment to, to get started. Um, but this took our relationship to a different level. And then when I left the bookstore, he was very much aware of that. In fact, he introduced me 
to Stuart, the guy who was in charge of TV talk. Without Cliff, that relationship would not have happened. Without that relationship, I never would have left the bookstore. And then when, when I was looking to continue to grow my business, now I'm doing it full time. I quit the bookstore. I'm doing the TV talk thing. I pick up a couple of more clients, but I still need to grow it more. And I reach out to Cliff one day and I said, Cliff, uh, I'm looking to grow my business even more. Uh, surely you have somebody on your list because he has this big referral list. And I said, surely you have somebody to send people to when they need help with the kind of stuff that I do. But just in case you don't, would you consider me? Here's the type of work that I'm looking to do for people. And I kid you not, Amy, he, he wrote me back the same day and he says, you know what? I don't have somebody on my referral list that does what you do. And I have an email in my box right now that I need to send to somebody. And you, I would love to send him to you. And I was just like, I can't believe that. I can't believe Cliff needed that hole that I'm filling. And so, um, and, and it was because he instantly knew who I was and, and the, what I was capable of doing because of the relationship that we already had. And to this day, Cliff sends me regular referrals. And, and I have other people that send me referrals, but it always starts out with the relationship. So, and I think that's true in life and in business and, in, 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 like I said, in life in general. Everything is about relationships and not trying to use people but to help people. And you got something that I need and I have something that you need. And let's all help each other make the world a better place and, and make your life richer because of what I'm able to provide for you. And hopefully, you know, you're able to make my life richer too. I mean, it's, it's a, that's what a relationship is, right? So, yeah, relationships are everything. Did you ever think that, um, you know, when you were a young kid, that you would be making your life, your living, your career off of TV? No, no. And I never even thought I would be an entrepreneur. Even 10 years ago, because I've been an entrepreneur now for three years. And so five years ago, I definitely thought, you know what? I can see where I could be an entrepreneur. But 10 years ago, no. I was very happy with my job. I liked the corporate environment. You know, there was, life was good, and I was, I was fitting well within that system. Some people I know, like I have a friend named Corey Miller from iThemes, and he's a guy, you talk to him, and he knew from an early, early age that he was going to be an entrepreneur. I'm not that guy. I turned 40 this year, just a couple of months ago, and I probably didn't know until I was between 30 and 35 years old that entrepreneurship might even be a thing for me. Prior to that, I thought, you know, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to be part of an organization and part of a corporate job or whatever it is. But I'm never going to be my own boss because that's not what I want to do or that's not how I'm wired. But one day, it wasn't one day, it was over a series of, of a year or two that I started to realize that that was going to be my eventual path. But as a kid, you know, no, not at all. N nothing like that. And see, what I love about your journey is that it wasn't anticipated for you. Like if you, you go back there, you said yourself, you didn't see that coming, but you pursued something you enjoyed, TV, something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And you kept at it and you didn't do it for money. You didn't do it for numbers. We talked about that earlier. And it just kind of evolved. Your dream evolved and it continued to grow where it is today. You have over 12 podcasts. You're doing some amazing things, um, you know, building wonderful relationships. Where do you see yourself going next? Do you have an idea or are you just kind of sitting back saying, well, let's see what happens? Well, that's a tough question to answer. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting dynamic. When I left the bookstore, I thought, this is great. I'm going to be able to make... Golden Spiral Media, because it's been Golden Spiral Media, the, the my personal podcasting stuff had been kind of the the stepchild. It was not the top priority. My my career was my top priority in terms of obviously family is number one, but I mean after that I had to do the nine to five thing first, and any time I could squeeze in the Golden Spiral Media thing, I was doing that. Well. So I thought when I left there that the Golden Spiral Media thing would be my number one thing. I would be able to spend all the time that I wanted on it and really make it with what my vision is. But that's not at all the way things worked out. 
Um, you know, when I first left and started doing audio production and consulting, it was all under Golden Spiral Media. But then my clients started getting confused. It was like, "What? Are you, Golden Spiral Media looks like a podcasting thing. Are you? I see like one link for what you do for your services. I mean, is this like a side thing for you? And I'm like, no, no, no. This is like my full-time job. This is how I feed my family. Okay, because I need to make sure, because I'm looking for somebody who's serious about this. And I'm like, oh, I'm very serious, you know. So it became clear that I needed to like, Make it clear. And that's when I separated out Golden Spiral Media is now just our podcast network. And all the stuff I do for other podcasters is is Pro Podcast Solutions, like you mentioned in the intro. And that business has just really, really grown. That's, like I said, how I feed my family. So now it's my day job. And Pro Podcast Solutions is, is still kind of the stepchild thing when I can get time to do that. And even though I've got all these other hosts and doing their thing, um, yeah, they're kind of doing their own thing under our umbrella. And, and still Golden Spiral Media isn't, isn't getting near the attention from me that, that it deserves or I thought I'd be giving it. But at the same time, you're still doing it. And, and I think that's the neat part is that you're helping others also by yeah. keeping that going. And even through your pro podcast solutions, you're talking about relationships. Yep. Even what you're doing is amazing because you helped us with the graphics. The audio intro guys um, is Daryl and his team. And, you know, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. And I'm excited to see what else you guys are going to do. I mean, you said you don't do video now. It wouldn't surprise me if maybe five, ten years down the road, you're like, hey, some new media, let's try it, you know, and go down yeah. that path. You never know. Yeah, I mean, we, we get requests for it pretty pretty regularly. And it's definitely something that we've kicked around. And I've even talked to some people that I know that do video about, about possibly um, fitting that within our structure. And, and so, yeah, you know, right now, when I, when I started Pro Podcast Solutions, I remember that, that first email that I had with Cliff. He said, well, how many clients can you take on? And I said, I can take as many as you can bring my way. Because I had the, the vision from day one as to how I would grow my business. And it would never be just me because if it's ever just me, then my, my growth and my income and everything is limited to what I am physically able to do. Right. And that means if I go on vacation, then I'm losing money. You know, not only am I spending money on vacation, but I'm not making any money. So I am losing money. Or if I get sick or whatever, you know, it's always going to be dependent on me being the one that can physically do everything. And that's pretty limiting. So I had a, a vision from day one to make Pro Podcast Solutions, even though I didn't know what I, Pro Podcast Solutions didn't exist then, right? It was all Golden Spiral Media. But even then, I knew that it was going to be a point, it was going to reach a point where there would be more than just me. And it was just a matter of time as to how long it would take to get there. And, you know, we're there now. We've got four audio editors. We're about to add our fifth. We've got a, a transcriptionist, a graphic artist, a show notes writer. I've got a you know, personal assistant. We've got this, you know, really great team that helps do what we do. And we're, you know, we're structured for growth for the future. You know, bring it on. We're ready. And, and that's really the plan for the future is just to continue to grow to help podcasters like we did for you. I mean, I, that's what I love doing. I wake up every morning excited about who I'm going to get to help start their podcast or improve their podcast or, you know, continue their podcast or whatever. Because we've got clients all, all on that spectrum. And it's a very rewarding thing that I get to do every day. And guys, if you are ever considering doing a podcast, reach out to Daryl. Uh, the notes, the links will be in the show notes page. Um, seriously, I'm a big fan. Honestly, I, I'm not planning to put another podcast out, so there's, no, <laughs> there's none of that. But if I was to, I would definitely um, go back because I, we had a great time. I really did enjoy everything. And I learned a lot from you because that's the thing. You didn't just help me set everything up. You explained it, which was awesome. So it's like kind of like an educational thing at the same time. So... My last question for you is how you can help other dream chasers like you've been helping podcasters. What is something that you would recommend to a dream chaser who wants to chase their dreams uh, but may not know how or is stuck in a rut and is confused? Anything under the sun, what is one thing you would tell them? 
You know, I think I would just point back to my own journey because that's that's really all that I can talk about is is what I've learned al- along my journey, and I and I think that my journey is probably not very uncommon, and I think that that that's really important. And, and so, for my advice would just be don't get caught up on five year plan, even one year plan. You know, the first thing to do is just the next step. And it's really easy to get bogged down in trying to figure out all the details. And, you know, so I knew when I started what my structure was going or what my vision was for adding audio editors and et cetera. But I didn't know what that would look like. At what point would we do that? How much I would pay them? You know, I didn't know any of those details. All I knew was my vision and I figured out what the next step that I needed to take to the best of my ability to figure that out to get there. And then I took that step and sometimes you go, okay, well that step wasn't quite right. I didn't know this. I didn't expect this or I, uh, you know, I miss, you know, predicted what, whatever. And so you have to recalibrate, but that's fine. That's all part of the process. And so just figure out, what in, with the information you have, what's the next best step you can take and then do that. And then you'll be in a different position with more information and more knowledge and more wisdom and, and more experience. And you'll be able to figure out the next step to take based on where you're at then and just keep doing that and you'll get there. It'll be hard work and there'll be days where you have to step back. There'll be days where you feel beat down and weary and like you're going to fail. And maybe you did fail that day, but tomorrow's a new day. And you take the next step from where you're at on that day. And so that's it. Just take one step at a time. Don't give up. Wake up each day believing you can do it. And you will. Well, I have nothing else to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, thank you so much for coming on the show and being a part of it and sharing your journey, which I'm excited to see continue. Wishing you all the best. Well, thank you. I I love chatting with you. I'm excited uh, anytime I get a chance to chat with you. I love the journey you've been on, and it's just been my honor to be a guest on your show. And guys, that was Daryl Darnell. So excited that he was able to come on the show and share his journey because it's an amazing one. He not only talks the talk, he walks the walk. So take his advice to heart because he took a step, and look what he's doing today. He's excited every day. And that's what we want for you. We want you to wake up excited for what you're doing to live your life with passion and not trepidation. Okay. So the goal is not to be waking up bummy and sad. So, you know, don't do that. If that's what's happening right now, take some time, you know, alarm bells should be going off. Take some time for yourself to evaluate what's going on and why you're feeling that way. What is it that's bringing that on? Okay. And then once you do that, That's taking a step. Taking that evaluation, that's a step. Now, take another step. Take take a step towards moving away from that feeling, moving away from the things that cause that feeling, and see what happens. See how your dream chase evolves, because it could be as wonderful as it has been for Daryl and what he's doing. Okay, so take some time for yourself, if you're waking up with trepidation, to evaluate what's going on in your life. And if you have some time, check out the links on the show notes page to Golden Spiral Media and Pro Podcast Solutions. And for some more information about the show today, go over to ChasingDreamsHQ.com slash episode 49. That's episode 49. Until next time, guys, when we hit the milestone 50, keep chasing. Thank you so much for listening to Chasing Dreams. Amy would love to connect with you and hear all about your pursuit of chasing your dreams. Connect with her on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram via at Chasing Dreams HQ. Or you can find Amy on Twitter at AmyJ21. That's A-I-M-E-E-J-2-1. Be sure to visit headquarters over at ChasingDreamsHQ.com for more inspiration, motivation, and resources to help with your own dream chase. We hope you'll join Amy next week. And until then, keep chasing. Keep chasing.